after news of the record-breaking contract, it was reported that Jalen Hurts had surgery? What's actually going on, and should we be concerned? Plus, talks of this all-pro being traded are heating up. Hear what Buda Baker has to say about playing for the Eagles. And Todd McShay was already in favor of Philly taking Bijan, but now Peter Schrager also believes the birds will take him at 10. But first, let's run it. Hey everybody, I'm Josh Davis and I cover the Eagles and I've got to say I really appreciate all the support so far. We're closing in on 3,000 subscribers and if you guys can help me get there before the draft, I will do something crazy. So be sure to like, subscribe, and turn the notifications on. And we start with the horrific news that Jalen Hurts had surgery to remove hardware from his ankle and may miss the start of the regular season. Okay, I'm sorry, that's cruel of me to do. Jalen won't be missing any time and he is perfectly fine. He did have surgery though, according to a report from Tim McManus, but it was simply a routine procedure to remove hardware that had been inserted in the ankle after Hurts suffered a high ankle sprain while playing for the University University of Alabama in an October 2018 game against Tennessee. Hertz was sidelined for nearly a month before returning to play in November of that season. Surgery to remove the hardware took place in February and was considered minor, according to sources who added that Hertz returned to his off-season workout routine not long after the procedure. Take a deep breath. Everything is fine, and I promise I won't do that again. Jalen has been the first one in the building and last one to leave, according to Daniel Jeremiah of the NFL Network, every single day, and literally shows up with a briefcase every single day. The dude is a breed of one. Let's move on to some more good news. Yesterday, we got word from Jeff Kerr that the Eagles have restructured the contract of Jordan Mailata. The move will reportedly save the Birds $7.64 million in cap space in 2024 and $7.77 million in 2025 as part of the Jordan Mailata restructure. And my first response was, music to my ears. I was standing on The giant, rugby-playing, Jalen Hurts-protecting left tackle with an angelic voice helps clear some additional cap room, sure, but as John Kincaid put it, now read the tea leaves, speculate. And that really is the question. What is Howie Roseman up to? It remains to be seen where exactly this money will be allocated, but recent reports could suggest it be used on Arizona Cardinals all pro safety as Dov Kleiman said yesterday that the Cardinals safety Buda Baker could be traded for a second or third round pick, an NFC executive told Albert Breer. He added that had Baker not wanted a new contract, his trade value would have been higher. But that's not all. Later in the day, a video resurfaced from Kay Adams' interview with Buda Baker back in February where the safety talked about how much he admires Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni. Something that I really like is that Eagles coach. Um, he's, he, who, he's who he is. Nick Sirianni. Exactly. So just seeing that is definitely special as a player. Buddha is practically asking the Eagles to come and get him at this point. So going back to our original question, what is Howie up to? We can now confirm that we have live footage of Howie Roseman's whereabouts and he is chasing down this deal as we speak. I can't help with the jokes, I'm sorry. But I do think it's a possibility for Buddha Baker. The initial questions and concerns were, how will this work with a cap? And how much would you have to give up? But I'm not really that concerned at all, at least from the asking price, because it's a second round and a third round or third round selection. So it really just comes down to money. And that's where this thing gets interesting. Let's take a look at the cap space. Dave Zangaro of NBC Sports shared that the reported cap hits early in Hertz contract are shockingly low. And Adam Schefter broke it down even further by tweeting, Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts salary cap numbers for the next four seasons after today's $255 million extension, 2023, 6.15 million, 2024, 13.56, 2025, 21.77, 2026, 31.77 million. The part you have to worry about is later in the contract as that's where the full effect of Hurts deal might cost you, pun not intended. I'm not worried about it though as Zangaro sums it up perfectly saying, of course that means that Hurts cap hits in 2027 and 2028 and beyond will be much, much higher, and this is all a part of the kick the can method that might make some fans nervous. But with the salary cap expected to continually rise, it's a strategy that simply makes sense. And the Eagles have been on the forefront of maximizing that strategy. Ultimately, the way for the Eagles to maximize Hurts' championship window is to draft well around him. 
but for the next few seasons, they'll still be able to supplement the roster with a smattering of free agents and they'll be able to keep their own cornerstone pieces. I am all for it. It gives you four seasons without a doubt to really build and acquire as many pieces as possible to win, and then you still have the ability to restructure like the article mentions in order to free up more room. So although Buda Baker may have seemed unlikely before, with the Hertz contract details coming to light and the Mylotta news, I think we might just see this play out in the draft. But SiriusXM NFL draft analyst Mark Dominic, who came into the league around the same time that Roseman did, has different thoughts about draft night. And he said, it's hard for me to think how he will stand pat. He just doesn't usually do that. My gut instinct is he's going to, if these quarterbacks pull off the board, I think he's going to make a move and go get one of these defensive players. SI.com's Ed Cracks pointed out the defensive group that he was talking about was Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter, Alabama edge rusher Will Anderson, and Texas Tech edge rusher Tyree Wilson. Dominic went on to say, I think he's more likely to move up than he is to pull back now that he's certain of Jalen Hurts, because I think he kept doing this to get the ammunition in case he needs the pick for next year, and now he doesn't need that pick. So I think he's going to be more aggressive moving up the boards than moving back. That's an interesting take, and one that I could definitely see evidenced by my mock draft as I posted yesterday. Go check it out if you haven't. But if Howie does decide to stay put, there seems to be a theme trending. I know Todd McShay has already mocked Bijan to the Eagles, but he did it again in his most recent mock draft. But the more shocking news to me is that Peter Schrager of Good Morning Football has Philly selecting the game-changing running back from Texas as well. And here's what he had to say. I know the Eagles haven't drafted a running back in the first round since the 1980s. I also know there aren't many elite players in this class. Robinson is one, pure and simple. I can't contain my excitement. You guys know how I feel about Bijan. And I think this is further proof that how he might actually shock the world and draft five in just over a week. All right, let's take a look at one of the most interesting sleepers in the draft, Jake Witt. At six foot seven, 302 pounds, Jake Witt has the conventional build and athleticism that every NFL team wants in today's game. Yet the journey to this point in his career has been anything but conventional. Witt was a three sport athlete at Ewan Trout Creek High School, where he played basketball, football, and track. Witt was a dominant wide receiver on the school's eight-man football team, recording 102 receptions in 18 games. He was also dominant on the hardwood, which is why he chose to pursue basketball at Michigan Tech. But after his freshman season and averaging 6.4 points per game, Witt decided to change majors and schools. He transferred to Northern Michigan and sat out a year to focus on his new major, which was sports and fitness management. Witt got the urge to play football again in 2020 and joined the team as a tight end before COVID-19 ended their season early. The following season, Witt was forced to make the switch from tight end to offensive tackle due to injuries along Northern Michigan's offensive line. Witt said the biggest learning curve moving from tight end to offensive tackle was pass blocking. After I played those three games at right tackle in 2021, I dedicated my entire offseason to offensive tackle technique. Witt turned heads at his pro day as he ran a 4.89 40-yard dash, 37-inch vertical jump, and 10-foot 3-inch broad jump. Given those numbers, it's easy to see why Witt has had had top 30 visits with six teams and interest from countless others, including a private workout with the Eagles as well. Ironically, Witt actually says one of his favorite players to watch and study is Eagles offensive tackle Lane Johnson. Someone I always mention is Lane Johnson. He was 6'6", 303 pounds at the combine, so he was one pound heavier than me and one inch shorter. Former tight end to offensive tackle, he's one of the best ever at right tackle. I try to watch his game to see how he handles a bull rush, how he works an outside zone, and his hand placement, just because I compare myself frame-wise and attribute-wise to Lane Johnson. Witt also went on to say that being coached by Jeff Stoutland would be awesome, and it sounds like he's all in. I mean, heck, I'm all in. I, I drafted him on the mock draft, if you didn't see that, but a great article by, by DeBirds again, and really kind of uh, similar attributes from Jordan Mailata. Remember, Mailata came from playing rugby and then drafted in the seventh round to being one of the best left tackles in the game. I don't know if we'll see Witt being available in the sixth or seventh round, and, and Philly may be taking a flyer on him, but at least it's something interesting and to keep an eye out. And huge props to DeBird's blog for landing this exclusive interview. If you don't follow DeBird's on Twitter, you're really missing out. All right, reminder about the live show tonight with Thomas 
Thomas Mott, 7 o'clock Eastern. Be sure to tune in. We'll be breaking down the Jalen Hurts contract, potential free agent targets, as well as trades, and potential draft scenarios, as well as giving away an Eagles jersey. Please help me to get to 3K subs before the draft. It would really mean a lot. Appreciate the support as always. Until next time, I'm Josh Davis, and this has been the Philly Special.